morning, more on that a little later on. Well, the riots have focused attention on our justice system, very much so this week. Police accusing the courts of being too lenient on offenders in the past, giving the impression to young people that they can get away with breaking the law with impunity. This week, hundreds of people have been arrested and the courts have been working throughout the weekend, indeed overnight at times, trying to deal with them. Solicitors, they're complaining, some of them, of chaos, with no time for them to prepare to represent defendants. And with many of those found guilty, likely to face custodial sentences, will our overpopulated prisons actually be able to cope with the increase in numbers? Joining me in the studio to discuss all those issues, or at least some of those issues, the criminologist Nick Groombridge, the barrister John Cooper QC, and from Manchester we have Mark Leach, the author of The Prisons Handbook. Gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Mark, let's start with you if we can. Um, prison numbers yesterday touched a record high. Where are we going to put those convicted of being involved in the looting and the riots? Well, of course, if you listen to the Minister of Justice this morning, they're saying that they've got way enough accommodation in order for them to deal with the people that are sent to prison. But I think that's rather disingenuous, you know. Our prison system, it's a state, is split into various gender, age and security categories. In terms of security, we have maximum, high, medium and low security prisons. In terms of gender, we have a split between male and female. And in terms of age, we have a difference between young offenders and, and adult prisoners. Now, what this assumes is that by saying we have the, the amount of space to cope is that this one size fits all. We, ha we would be, have to be very, very lucky to make sure that those we send to prison in effect, make sure that the pegs fit the holes, and the chances are they won't. The, the majority of rioters, from what I can see, seem to be 17 to 21-year-old young adult males. But when you look at the split in the prison system about where the spaces exist, that is not where it exists. The, the majority of spaces are in the low end of the security spectrum, in the, in the medium and the uh, open prisons. And anyone who can talk and walk upright must realise that that's the last place that you need to be sending volatile rioters in, in today's environment. John Cooper, before anybody gets sent to prison, they have to go through the courts, and the courts are creaking. The courts are creaking, there's no doubt about it. Everything's doing, in my view, a tremendous job from the, the solicitors to the judges to the court ushers, doing a lot of uh, overtime, unpaid overtime, I might add. Uh, but the system is creaking. It's not used to dealing with this uh, ferocity uh, of cases going through it. But so far, it's, it's surviving. Uh, Nick Groombridge, there's talk of exemplary sentencing, isn't there, by which we mean examples will be set. There's a yeah. danger inevitably, of miscarriages of justice, because sometimes swift justice is not always fair justice. Indeed, uh, we have exemplary justice in terms of the sentencing, but also uh, we have our own version now of the perp walk, whereby uh, you are ambushed outside the court and demanded by the uh, media, you know, why have you done this? So we have this additional sort of penality, uh, part of our sort of punishment society. Well, we have, a, a riot, we have a riot of punishment. <laughs> but it's interesting you mention that because we've seen a succession of images this week of people going into Westminster, Westminster Magistrates Court, other courts too, often shielding themselves. Often it's the case they go into court, they're terribly deferential uh, to the magistrates, they come outside, they're rather less deferential uh, and some of what they've got to say you wouldn't hear them saying inside court. I say this with a vested interest because this news channel argues for cameras to be in court. And there is a sense, is there not, that you know, justice has to be seen to be done. Sometimes we need to see these people in court. I mean, so I have to say, I mean, I've been a, a proponent uh, of cameras in court. There have to be some restrictions, of course, for uh, sensitive cases. Yeah. But I think the more people see, the more the public see what goes on in the court, it actually uh, gives them more faith in the criminal justice system. So I would agree with you on this. Uh, uh, the more publicity, the better, within reason, of course. Yeah, let's just go back to Mark Leach and talk about some of these young people who are, who are going into prison in particular, and actually, more generally, the types of people who are going into to prison, Mark. I mean, there are some amazing statistics about levels, for instance, of illiteracy. Half of the prison population has got a reading age of under 11. Yeah, that's correct. The research that was done by the Basic Skills Agency a number of years ago revealed that numeracy and literacy levels in prison are so low, it makes people there ineligible for 98% of jobs. What we, what we have seen, is, in effect, is a fractured society. Nobody can condone what has happened in terms of these riots. People have lost their, their jobs, their homes, their livelihoods, and nobody can, can excuse it. And I sometimes think when I hear people start to make what they call explanations, it's just an excuse by another the name. I don't think there's any excuse for it, but by the same token, we can't ignore the, the massive gap between the haves and the have-nots. How can we realistically argue, Colin, for a person who's gone into a shop and looted a pair of trainers to be sent to jail? 
when the former Home Secretary Jackie Smith took £110,000 of public money and was only required to apologise to the House of Commons. If we want to start to put right what's gone so wrong in our society, then yeah. we have to start with those got fractures, got and it means addressing uncomfortable questions like, like Jackie Smith. There's a danger, Nick Groombridge, isn't there, of this sort of moral equivalence arguments keep cropping up. I mean, somebody was talking about the bankers looting uh, this morning. Uh, you know, whatever your views of bankers and their alleged venality, mm -hmm. it is clearly uh, different to threaten with menaces, uh, to throw, uh, you know, petrol bombs at cars where parents are struggling to get a baby from the back seat with the behaviour of bankers. This isn't helpful. Uh, as a sociological criminologist, I'm used to being accused of uh, making excuses or those sociological justifications uh, about which Boris Johnson has spoken. Um, but I think we do need to explain, we do need to understand, because we're all going to have to... Uh, part of the clearing up, it's not just the brooms, it's the understanding. And even Peter Oborn, uh, you know, a high Tory, uh, in a blog recently, mm, he might spoke that, about, the, uh, <laughs> about the, the moral issues, <laughs> and there are real moral issues. So I'm not saying that the rioters are causing riots because of this moral equivalence, even when they themselves say they're doing that. But there is a joint problem w yeah. with society. But I think, uh, it's right. I, think I, I agree there's no excuse. But we, we can't take away the fact that there's a moral compass missing. And when you do have politicians, when you do have, I have to say, the press at times, yep. uh, and bankers and responsible people not seemingly having a moral compass, it will filter down. Let's just talk about sentencing, because in a sense yeah. that's a specific question here. And I mean, John Cooper, you know, as, as a barrister, as somebody who's seen the way the courts work, there is this feeling, it's certainly articulated by a lot of our correspondents uh, who are sending in emails. I mean, some of them are at the, you know, the wilder shores of wanting everybody birched. But there is a consistent core of people who feel that sentencing policy has, has let down the public in this country. Well, I don't think sentencing policy has. What we're having at the moment are the... All these offences are serious. Let me preface everything I have to say with that. But what we're having at the moment are the guilty pleas and perhaps the lesser offences uh, in, in the panoply of criminal offences. Uh, mm. and, and we need to take a breath. We need to take a step back. Uh, and the, in the immortal words of, of Dad's army, don't panic, because the court system will take its uh, a, a time, uh, and at the end of the day, I'm conscious that there'll be a proper uh, a breadth of sentencing. But let's not judge everything at the moment with what's happened in the last three days. Yeah. Mark Leach, a final thought, really, from you. It, it is a sad reality, is it not, that a lot of the young men who will be going to prison once their sentences have been handed down by the Crown Courts, because it's been deferred there in many instances, will find that when they get inside, for the first time in some of their lives, they'll have a, a grown-up male role model to look to. Not the right kind, but a, a kind of role model. I think you're absolutely right, Colin. One thing that struck me uh, as I've watched the people leave the courts, the, the, the kind of young people, 12, 13, 14 years old, they've always seemed to be accompanied by their mothers, but there was an absolute absence of any male father figure. And by blaming the parents, I think we need to take account of the fact that some of these mothers actually struggle to do their best. They don't want to see their children involved in crime, but now what will happen is these young offenders will go into prison. They will have, hopefully, positive role models that will set some boundaries for them. But the one thing I'd like to finish off by saying is there is a common denominator between bankers and MPs and looters and it is that there is now a fundamental lack of respect for authority and for other people their property and their livelihoods and I think until we can get that back we're on a hiding to nothing can we just John Cooper look at this through the other end of the sentencing telescope if you like there, there have been suggestions from the police that they didn't initially go in as as heavily as they would like to have done because to make arrests with snatch squads or the rest of it requires two witnesses lots of paperwork and the evidence present danger of being sued for compo. Well, I think we can uh, over-exaggerate this. It's like the, uh, the health and safety culture. Uh, health and safety laws are sensible if properly interpreted. And let's be sensible about interpreting uh, 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 the law. I can understand the police being apprehensive, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can't go in and, and do their duty, which I think on the whole they have done. We've run out of time. I was desperate to ask Nick <laughs> Groomery one more question. I'm sorry. You see, I was, I was about to go, but uh, I'll I wanted to talk about the gap in perception between sentencing and what actually happens. <laughs> we'll, we'll have that conversation privately, sadly. OK, Nick, John, right. and yep. Mark, thanks yep. all very much indeed. Do let us know uh, your thoughts on the stories we've been covering today. Email us at newsatsky.com or text us pithily if you can, 84501. If your taste runs to Twitter, it's at Sky News. This is Sky News on our website, skynews.com. More on why a council flat tenant in Wandsworth is facing a controversial eviction. Also coming up...